Good morning, everybody. I am so happy today. I actually just posted this morning the final reveal of the house makeover. I'm on some side streets right now. I'm actually just driving to a coffee shop because we are going to be working on the house today. This morning, I posted the final reveal of the Sonza house makeover. And guys, I have just been overwhelmed reading your comments this morning. Like, thank you all so much for the love and support on that little mini series. Like, it was such a dream come true and I can not believe like YouTube and Wayfair sponsored such an incredible makeover. It was just so much fun and I absolutely loved doing every second of it. I can't believe how much we accomplished in 10 days. But besides the point of the house makeover, we are working on my house today. Like the Sones of Family House has had some love. Now we need to head back to mine. But I am going to get a coffee quickly. I'm going to Phil's Coffee. If you guys live around a Phil's Coffee, I have been obsessed with it lately. So I'm going to get one and then we're going to start over at the house on the kitchen. All right, I have the items. We're here. Okay, my car's humming. But anyways, um, if you like Phil's Coffee or have never been, they have a drink called the Oatmeal Cookie Drink. I don't think that's the actual name of it. I just had a friend that told me it tastes like oatmeal cookie, and then I went there craving an oatmeal cookie and then asked about it, and they have it. So I get it every single time. I don't know what the actual drink mix is, but they should know. I have a feeling that they would. I got a large iced one. It is so good. Love it, and then I also got a croissant. So I'm gonna head over to the house right now. I actually haven't been there in like 10 days, like maybe two weeks about. Um, I need to measure the floor so we can get tile ordered and then we're gonna start the walls in the kitchen. Can we please just take a moment of appreciation for how beautiful the store handle is? Oh. I love it. And after like visiting so many architectural salvage places and seeing different door handles, I just absolutely love this. Like look at the little scallops at the bottom. And then we have this right here, our little, what is this technically called? Door ringer? <laughs> it's so beautiful. And I love kind of the little like scroll work detail on the edge and the wrought iron. It is, I just love it. Oh, I love my home. All right, so we're gonna need 180 square feet of the square tile, which is this one here, guys. Now, a lot of you really liked this tile, and I did as well. I was kind of leaning a little bit more towards this one, but I'm actually gonna be doing a mix of both, so we get essentially the best of both worlds, and I will share that as the tile kind of comes, but this is the one we're ordering first, which is going to be kind of throughout this entire area and then throughout here as well. If you guys remember back to my last video, we headed to the Miyoded Paint Center where I checked out some of the swatches and different options and colors they had for wall treatments and finishes. And that was like three weeks ago or so. So I actually ended up picking up the product the day after and now we're gonna actually apply it. This was the swatch that I ended up going with, which I shared all the details in that last video. This is their Tenaccio Forenza product. <laughs> this is a product that we're applying on the walls and it's in this huge bucket. Oh my gosh, why do I like want to eat that kind of? Oh my god, it kind of smells good too. About to eat it. <laughs> All right, we have our trowel. We have our other trowel. And this is the first time I've used something like this. So let's see how it goes. I'm gonna pick up product. And here we go. Oh my gosh, can you guys hear the sand? So this product actually has granules of sand in it. So once it dries down, the plaster mixed with the sand and the pigment create this really beautiful like lime washed, just textural look. Okay guys, this is not hard. This is like, I mean, I feel like I'm, I could paint as quick as this. Got another scoop of our frosting. Oh, it got in my eye. Oh no, it's in my eye. It's not actually, it's on the edge of my eye.
And I'm also going to be applying this product onto the underside of our arch as well. That way this arch looks fully like one encapsulated, like sandy textured, just wall, really beautiful. I will say guys that this product is also incredible because it doesn't dry super fast. So you have time to work with it. You have time to like, if you make errors or if you hit something, it's not like your wall is ruined. Like you have a good amount of time, which is really nice. So now we're going to take a damp sponge, uh, it's just like squeezed out, and it's been drying for a little bit, so I think we can now go in and just kind of touch the surface and just smooth out any of these like little like divots and bumps. See this little kind of imperfection? You just go over it with the sponge and it just smooths it out. Okay guys, look how incredible it is looking so far. So this area, as you can see, I've traveled the ceiling and this has only taken about an hour and 45 minutes for all of this up to right about here. So still have, I would say, mm, another, you know, half the kitchen over here. Still drying, so if there's like some crazy imperfections on here, it is still kind of drying down. Last check-in of the night, I am covered in the product. It's in my eyes, it's in my mouth, but you know what? We're all fine about that, doesn't matter. I have it on everything. Justin and I got it up on all of the walls, all of the ceiling. We also smoothed it completely. First coat is done. The only area that we didn't have enough to finish was just this little area here where I'm gonna be putting the vent hood anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. And then we also didn't get underneath this large archway. Ran out of product, but we are gonna pick up some more product tomorrow morning, start with the archway. That way we can apply the second coat all day. Do you guys see this? Can you see this wall finish? It is perfect. It is exactly, exactly, exactly what I was wanting in here and it is the most perfect finish on these walls. Let me show you guys. Look at how stunning that color is. It's like a warm white. Look at the ceiling. It just has the softest like movement and texture in it. This corner right here, just it, I feel like I'm in like, I don't even know, another country. I love the way that this looks. It is perfect. Uh, something I will say is that over here, we were kind of like tired by the time we got over here. So you have to wait for the product to dry down and we didn't wait for it to fully dry down before sponging. So you can kind of still see some of the trowel marks and some of the sponge almost like texture. So definitely today when we do the second coat, I'm just gonna ensure that we let it dry down a bit more so that we can actually really sponge it and give it like a super smooth finish, kind of similar to what was happening in here. But I love it so, so much. It is perfect. Also added a box fan just to start drying down this layer of it quicker. So this process is a little bit messy. Got it on my phone. Got it on my face. Got it on the walls. But it's going great. The second coat actually is going on really nice and smooth, which is lovely. I will say that the product that we got today, as you guys can see, is quite a bit thinner than what we got last time. And I think that's because we actually let it sit for like three weeks before using it, which they suggest you use the products right away after you get them mixed. And so I think ours was thicker, but it didn't really affect anything. So we're just adding on the second coat, smoothing it on, and sponging it. So in this corner here, what I'm doing is taking our plaster material and just applying it in the corner. And I'm kind of rubbing it in like, almost like caulking because I feel like it's giving a very, almost like rounded corner, which really goes with the style of wall that we're doing. So I'm gonna let this dry down. And then once it's dry down, we can sponge the edges to make it look like a free flowing kind of wall. I'm gonna share how the tape kind of comes off. 
as you can see, the plaster just kind of crumbles around it and you get a really, really clean line, which is great. I still have to go through and sponge this wall, but I want to just peel the tape back while it is still a little damp. The kitchen walls are the best thing I have ever done. I literally want to say a cuss word right now, which I never cuss on my channel, so I fucking love them! <laughs> are you joking with me right now? This is the dried plaster. Look how freaking incredible this looks in the kitchen. It is exactly what I wanted. A little bit of texture, a little bit of just visual something on the walls. I really just wanted a slight bit of texture and this looks amazing. The texture on the wall, like do you see this? I hope you can see it you guys. It looks stunning. I cannot believe we did this. Of course this section will be covered by our range hood which is going to be built somewhat soon I'm hoping. I'm gonna be working on that as well. And this is what the other side of the kitchen looks like. And if you also remember, the hallway had a little bit of those like spackle lines I mentioned, but we got all of those out with the second coat, smoothed it all the way down, and it just looks, it looks beautiful. It couldn't look better in my opinion. Like this is exactly what I wanted for the kitchen space. It is kind of hard to share just with the lighting in here at the moment, but I hope that you guys can get an idea of what this plaster finish looks like. I also started editing this video this morning and I'm sorry if it was a little bit boring to watch me do the process. I wanted to share it with you guys, of course. However, putting white plaster on top of a white wall isn't that interesting, I will say. I would say what the cost of the walls in here were were a little under $400 to do all of the plaster, which I really don't think is too bad, uh, but I did want to give you guys a price breakdown. I did two buckets of the product for the entire space and I think the buckets are $170 each, so maybe a little under 400, but I came over because I have been holding on to something that I've been wanting to put in this kitchen for over probably a couple of months now, and that is my light fixtures. You guys know that I have these antique, these are actual antique 1920s Spanish Gothic Revival sconces, and I love them. I found these at uh, Revival Antiques a while back, and I picked them up when I found them. I thought the amber color was gonna be great in here, uh, and I just loved the top plate as well, how it was kind of a hexagon shape and had all of this really great patina on it. So we are gonna hang these. I'm so excited to see what they look like in front of the windows. Everybody, please say goodbye to this lovely lady right here. She served her time. This one. I actually kind of love how the cover just kind of like, you just push it right up. And then you just twist the screw to lock it in place. We have a lantern up! I love it! I feel like I'm literally gonna have a heart attack in this video, you guys, because I just keep loving everything. It's coming out so beautiful. Look at the lantern in front of the window. How pretty is that? I love it. It is so great. Let's get in the other one. I actually need to test this one to make sure it works. Let me put a bulb in here. It's kind of fun. Oh, there's a little latch. I love vintage lights. Like, they are so unique. Little kind of latch that you open here. Does the bottom open? Oh, yeah. So then the bottom opens up. How cool is that? And I'm just going to swap it with the previous bulb. All right, guys, it is our moment of truth. Let's see if this works. It does, it works. <laughs> the 
this window here gets such great afternoon sunlight so I love how there's like this little glass element just to add a bit of warmth to the space like look at how stunning that color looks in here I like I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next I can't tell if there's anything else I could do in the kitchen today uh, but something I did actually want to ask you guys about was your thoughts on the canned or recessed lights in here so at the moment they look like this they're just your traditional kind of recessed light and i actually went ahead and applied some of the plaster onto this one but it just doesn't look that great i will say it's not the best look it doesn't match the ceiling as much as i wish it would so i'm actually thinking about doing almost these little like spotlights um from the ceiling i've seen people use them in the past and i thought they're really pretty and i only have a couple of recessed lights in here so there's not going to be too many i'll pop up a photo right here of what i'm kind of thinking for this space but something kind of like a dark bronzy brass to go back to our light fixtures and hardware but i'm thinking of including those throughout the kitchen almost to add a little bit more interest i also think on top of the plaster ceiling they're just gonna look really nice and clean like these little brass just kind of spotlights that are gonna illuminate of course out they're not gonna direct the light down i still have no idea what i'm doing for the range hood which is gonna go up here i do have a little bit of a concept in my head and i do know that once i'm done with it i actually want to use the same exact plaster product that i used over the top of it so it kind of blends in to the wall and almost looks like it was like crafted into the architecture of the space so that's what I'm thinking for up there. I just don't know how stylistically I want it to look yet. I'm also considering getting a new range for here because the downstairs range is really old and the upstairs one is more on the newer side. But what I can do is actually transfer the one up here to downstairs and then get one that kind of matches this kitchen a little bit more since we're having our fun in here at the moment. I thought that would be a nice touch. And last thing I want to mention is that the marble is actually going to be installed this weekend in the upper. So if you guys remember that open shelving I did over here, um, right up above the coffee bar area, right up inside of here, there's actually going to be marble. So a continuation of the backsplash is going to go all the way up into the back of these. That way it kind of looks like a built-in hutch inside of the kitchen. And I think it's going to look beautiful. Like I really love the idea of adding marble back here. I also have extra marble from my countertop. So I figured why not, you know, use it in the kitchen. This little glow right here is actually coming from our light fixture. Like look at that little bit of warmth. Isn't it pretty? It's so pretty. I love it. We made great progress this week in the kitchen, plastered all of the walls. I still need to order the window mullions. We got the tile ordered for the floor, which is on its way. It's going to take between zero to four weeks, it said, to get here. And then just need to do a little bit more plaster work in the archways and on that wall over there. And guys, like, this kitchen's coming along so beautifully. And it's really going in the direction that I have been envisioning for this space. I really, really like it so much and I hope that you do as well. So make sure if you are not already to also follow me over on Instagram. I'm gonna start posting a lot more behind the scenes stuff over on Instagram, asking you guys for polls and opinions and just like sharing bits and pieces there. So that is just Lone Fox Home. I'll put it right up there on the screen for you guys and I will catch you all in my next one. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you guys on Sunday. Bye.